Hey everybody, it's Dr. Brian Mould, the diabetes coach. I am a certified diabetes care and education specialist and IFM certified in functional medicine. I specialize in helping people to reverse type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, and metabolic dysfunction by finding and addressing the underlying root causes. And in this video, today we're going to be talking about the difference between diabetes remission and diabetes reversal. This is something we hear these terms talked about quite a bit on different videos online in blog posts and articles. And there is actually a difference between type 2 diabetes reversal and type 2 diabetes remission. So I want to go over those with you today so you understand what we're talking about when we use those terms, and you can set your sight on whatever goal is appropriate for you. As always, if you like this content, if you like the videos I put out, please subscribe to the channel and click that bell for notifications so when I release a new video, you get notified right away and you can watch it. All right, so let's talk about diabetes reversal and diabetes remission. And first, let me make sure I'm clear that we're talking about type 2 diabetes here, not type 1. Type 1 diabetes is a progressive autoimmune disease which affects the insulin-producing cells of the pancreas called the beta cells. The beta cells lose function, stop producing insulin, and the body becomes insulin-dependent. There can be something called the honeymoon phase in type 1 diabetes. It's not a true remission. It happens when someone typically starts on exogenous or injected insulin. Blood sugar is lowered, which gives the pancreas a little bit of a rest. And then sometimes we'll see insulin production increase. Sometimes people can even get back off of insulin for a while altogether or can use less insulin, but then it does usually start to progress again at some point. That's all type 1 diabetes. What we're talking about today is type 2 diabetes, which is a metabolic dysfunction where the blood sugar elevates not due to autoimmune disease. It's typically due to insulin resistance in the liver, muscles, and or fat cells. There can be an insulin deficiency component down the line, but the primary driver is insulin resistance where we no longer respond to the hormone insulin even though we're making plenty of insulin to achieve normal blood sugar control. For many years, decades, the idea of reversing diabetes was equated to a myth. It just didn't happen, or at least in the mainstream conventional medical system, it was viewed as something that didn't happen. The main reason, of course, for that is that drugs and medications to lower blood sugar don't reverse diabetes or put it in remission. And in fact, the only way to reverse diabetes or put it in remission is through diet and lifestyle changes. And that's what we're going to talk about here today. Diabetes reversal is considered more of a lay term thrown around by people with diabetes or perhaps more natural practitioners trying to help people with diabetes. In marketing, we'll see sometimes the idea of reverse your diabetes in 90 days, that type of thing. But there is actually diabetes reversal. It is possible. So we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes, what it means and how to do it. But first, let's focus on diabetes remission. Diabetes remission has now become an accepted term. We've seen in a variety of clinical trials that diabetes can be put into remission, type 2 diabetes, and it's been shown through bariatric or weight loss surgery, through low or very low calorie diets, through ketogenic style diets, low carbohydrate diets, and possibly even plant-based diets. So at this point, we know clinically, scientifically, that diabetes can be put into remission. And in fact, just recently, several groups got together and defined diabetes remission. A team of international experts from three organizations, Diabetes UK, the American Diabetes Association, and the European Association for the Study of Diabetes created this definition. And the definition is this. Remission is when your hemoglobin A1c, a measure of long-term blood glucose levels, remains below low 48 millimoles per mole or 6.5% for at least three months 
without diabetes medication or what's known as hypoglycemic medication. So three months of an A1C under 6.5% with no diabetes medication, that's considered diabetes remission. Now, there are a number of ways to achieve remission as I've gone over a few minutes ago. Special diet considerations, weight loss surgery are the two biggest. The reason this is considered remission rather than reversal is this idea that it can come back if you stop doing what you did to achieve remission. For example, if you went on a very low carbohydrate or ketogenic diet and that brought your blood sugar down under 6.5%, A1C, you're able to hold it there on that diet, but then you went off that diet and started eating carbohydrates higher in starch and sugar, for example, and your A1C goes back up, then you are now out of diabetes remission. So diabetes remission is considered a temporary state based on your actions or based on the progression of the type 2 diabetes. There's also this idea that perhaps over time, the type 2 diabetes will get worse and you'll no longer be able to control it with diet and lifestyle alone, which may or may not be the truth. Okay, so that's diabetes remission. It's a short term, it's a temporary state typically of controlled blood glucose blood sugar under an A1C of 6.5% for three months or more without diabetes medication. What is diabetes reversal? Diabetes reversal to me would be a more permanent state, a state where you have increased your metabolic flexibility to where you can eat a wide variety of foods without your blood sugar spiking, without losing blood sugar control. And the only way to achieve diabetes reversal is to eliminate the underlying root cause. For example, if your liver is insulin resistant due to inflammation or exposure to toxins or because there's fat accumulated in the liver cells and your fasting blood sugar is high, the only way to reverse that condition would be to eliminate the driver. So to burn the fat out of the liver, to reduce the toxins in the liver to reduce the inflammatory state to get your liver to a place where it becomes insulin sensitive again and we could say the same thing for the muscles same thing for the fat cells if we can get the fat cells the muscles and the liver to a place where they are no longer insulin resistant we can increase metabolic flexibility increase energy flux so that the energy the glucose and fat is freely flowing in and out of the liver, muscles, and fat cells without resistance, without the insulin resistance, without this backup, without this overflow, then you can achieve normal blood sugar control without the need for medications and without the need for a restrictive diet. So to me, if you've reversed type 2 diabetes, your blood sugar is going to be normal. It's going to be fasting in the 80s or low 90s. After meals, it's going to go up maybe 20, 30, 40 points, and it's going to come down quickly and reset to baseline. Your hemoglobin A1C is going to be well under 6%. It's going to be in the normal range, so closer to 5.5%, without the need for not only medications, but also blood sugar lowering supplements, things like berberine and high dose cinnamon and so forth. Can that be done? Absolutely, it can be done. It takes more time, it's harder, there's less of a likelihood that it's gonna happen than diabetes remission, but it can be done. You can get your body to a point where you no longer have type two diabetes, it's not even in remission, it's reversed. You are metabolically healthy, and metabolically flexible again, you can have some potatoes, you can have some fruit, and your blood sugar does not spike. You don't get a surge of insulin because you are no longer insulin resistant. Now, how do you determine which is right for you? We always start with Let's put diabetes at least into remission first. Let's get that A1C down to a controlled range. I like to see it below 6%. First, maybe with some diabetes medication, and then we start to get off of diabetes medication as you no longer need it. And we do this through fat loss. We address the underlying root causes, and we also follow a low carbohydrate or ketogenic 
or animal-based diet, a diet that is not going to spike your blood sugar, a diet where you can get a nice even glucose throughout the day. So if you're wearing a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor, it's a nice flat curve throughout the day and you work your way into diabetes remission. And then if you wanna try to totally reverse the disease, you keep going, you keep addressing those underlying root causes. So you become more and more metabolically flexible over time. You build muscle, you go through body recomposition, you become more lean, you burn the fat out of the liver and the muscles, you empty your fat cells so you can have energy flux, high energy flux in and out of fat cells, in and out of the liver, in and out of the muscles, and you build that metabolic flexibility. That's the key over time to diabetes reversal, type 2 diabetes reversal. All right, so I hope you found that interesting and informative. You're not going to hear a lot of other people talking about this. I've been helping people to reverse diabetes and put it in remission for over 25 years. If you want to get more information about how to do that, I have a free gift. You can download it in the description for this video below. It's called the Blood Sugar Manifesto, where I'll go through some dietary strategies, physical activity strategies, and supplements that can help you to at least put your diabetes into remission. And again, if you like this content, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications so you don't miss my next video. This is Dr. Brian Mole, the Diabetes Coach, and I'll see you back soon.